Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and in this very quick tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we set things up for an audio edit. We're not actually going to go into the detail of editing audio, but we're going to look at how we turn on and off our audio waveforms and look at those in a few different ways. So I'm working from the default interface. So if you come to Window, Workspaces, and Default, this is the, the layout that I'm looking at. And the first thing I always do when I want to edit my audio is turn on the audio meters on the right hand side. So you can see when I click this button in the middle of my screen, it turns on those audio meters and basically allows me to stretch that out so I can see all the way from minus infinity up to zero and then plus six. So as I'm editing my audio, I can keep an eye on my levels and make sure that nothing is peeking out and gonna give me any distortion. The second thing that I'll do is get my timeline laid out um, as I want it. And there's a few different options here depending on how you prefer to work. So if we come to the appearance option here on the right, you can see we've got a few different options for showing our audio waveforms or not showing them at all. So you can see I can select just to show the audio um, and basically that's gonna show my waveforms and nothing else. I can show audio waveforms with a kind of smaller thumbnail of the video and then different kind of iterations of that where I have either a smaller audio waveform and a bigger film strip of the video or where I have no audio waveform but just the thumbnail of the video. So depending on how you prefer to work or which part of your project you're working on, you may want to flip between these at different points in time. We can also go to this very thin option here, which is useful if you have a lot of layers that you need to see, but less useful if you need to see that audio waveform as you're editing your audio. The other options we have in this panel are for zooming in on the timeline, and it's going to zoom in on the location of the playhead. So wherever I position my playhead is where we're going to zoom in. And the shortcut for this is command plus and minus, or if you're using a trackpad, you can pinch on the trackpad to zoom in and zoom out. The other option we have here, which is super useful, I find, is this ability to increase and decrease the height of our track. So basically we can increase the height of our video tracks and our audio waveforms. And obviously then with the different settings we have here, we have a lot of control over exactly what we see and how much detail we see in our audio waveform, which can become really handy when you're trying to edit to a beat or to a certain part of your voice track, or looking at things you need to cut out or modify the levels for throughout your audio track. Now there are a couple of shortcuts uh, for these options. So the shortcuts that I really like when I'm working on my audio edits, obviously Shift and Z will zoom me to my entire timeline. Let's go back to this option here. And then Command and Plus will zoom me into my playhead or if I'm hovering over and I have scrubbing turned on, it's gonna zoom me in on that red line that you see. So we can override the location of the playhead by having our red playhead here, which is where we're scrubbing to, visible on the timeline. So now you can see I'm zooming in and zooming out of that. And then when I wanna zoom in and zoom out of the playhead, I just move my mouse away from the timeline and that changes that. So with Command plus and minus, we can zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. With Shift, Command and plus or minus, we can zoom the height of our tracks. So we can modify the height of our tracks just as we can with the, the mouse up here on the top right. We can use command plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out the height. So we've got a real nice level of control over how much detail we see in our audio tracks and also how we can fluidly move in and move out of different parts of the timeline. So that's a quick overview of how to get your timeline set up for audio editing. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.